The only fight we have in the New Testament, we don't fight against flesh and blood, the Bible says. The only fight we have is the fight of faith. Okay, we're starting the final section of this book, the last seven chapters, the last week of your journeying to the holy fear of God. And believe me, this is not an exhaustive message, but it's going to get you on a good start. And I know the Holy Spirit's going to show you more and more. But this is the section I'm really excited about because in my search, I have found over 40 distinct promises that God makes only to those who fear him. Now, we're going to cover some of those promises. No way we can do all of them in seven chapters. But I want to make a remark here. The promises of God are not automatic. They have to be appropriated by faith. Let me give you an example. The Bible says, forever, O Lord, your word is established in heaven. It does not say, forever, O Lord, your word is established in heaven and earth. Why doesn't it say that? Well, the Bible says the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he's given to the sons of men. Now, the way I like to see it is this. God owns the entire earth. He's the owner of it. But he's leased the earth to men and women. Let me say it like this. When Lisa and I were first married, we leased an apartment. We didn't own that apartment. The owners owned the apartment. We were able to decorate however we wanted in that apartment. The only time the owners would come in is if we asked them to come in. So listen to this again. Forever, O Lord, your word is established in heaven. How does it get established on the earth? Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. Wow. Now listen, God says, so shall the word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. How does it return? When we speak it. So he has spoken it. When we speak it on earth, we're the second witness and we establish it on the earth. Let me give you an example. God said to Abraham, it is through Isaac that the nation of Israel is going to come. And God is the one that picked out Isaac's wife. But yet when Rebekah is brought to Isaac, they find out she can't have babies. Oh my goodness, do we just wait until it just happens? No, the Bible says that Isaac cried out to the Lord and he heard him and opened up her womb. What did Isaac do? He said, God, you promised my father that the nation of Israel would come through me. And of course, it wasn't called the nation of Israel. So he said that the nation promised would come through me and the Messiah would come through me. That means I need to have her womb open up so I speak to her womb and command it according to the covenant that God made to my father to open up. And you know what happened? It opened and she had twins. She had Esau and Jacob. And now the lineage would continue. So if there's anybody that you would think would have had an automatic promise, it would have been Isaac and Abraham. However, they had to contend for it. And this is why we come into the New Testament. And the Bible tells us to fight the good fight of faith. You know, they were fighting with swords and spears back in the the days of the Old Testament. The only fight we have in the New Testament, we don't fight against flesh and blood, the Bible says. The only fight we have is the fight of faith. And what is the fight of faith? That is when we appropriate what God has promised us in his word and we establish it here on this earth. With that knowledge, let's go into the next six chapters.